Tinkaton is not the type of girl you want to mess with. But when you're looking at it stat-wise, it's incredibly underwhelming with its base 75 attack, but it's got solid special defense and decent speed, I guess. But not only does its solid fairy steel typing help it out a lot, its exclusive move Gigaton Hammer at 160 power before stab makes up for that low base attack. We can boost up with Swords Dance to double our attack, and the hammer does a ton of damage. Stab Play Rough also now hits pretty hard, and versatility and options with things like Encore or Screens makes this thing viable in a few different ways, but today we're gonna go full offensive Tinkaton and things are gonna get hammered. My favorite Tinkaton fact is that these things are like the natural predator of Corviknight for some reason. It's said that they bash rocks with their hammer into the air to knock down Corviknights. Not only that, but its hammer also looks like it's made of scrap from fallen Corvi boys, and I just think that that's metal as hell. Despite this thing being badass, it's not used a whole lot in competitive, and I'm gonna show the thing some love today. Now, if you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, and I'd love to have you as part of the journey. Now with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with a sticky spider boy. And I, in fact, have a spider as well, and we got, a, got ourselves a good old-fashioned spy, spy off of sorts. And the funny part is we're actually here to do the same exact thing. We basically want to lay down sticky web and make each other slow, and we kind of just have a weird matchup here. I decide, looking at their squad, they do have a rapid spinner in the form of potentially the Cyclozar, but I'm gonna lay down my webs anyway and kind of force them to do that if that's the route they want to take. So I spread my webs, he just kind of throws his around, and we just got it sticky all over the place, and I hate it. So the thing is, I know that this spider ops can't really do much to me, and I'm just going to stay in here and go for a layer of toxic spikes, because I'm just going to make the entry hazards just a whole pain in the ass for him. So it turns out they're actually going to do the same thing, and I'm like, wow, this is truly, this has become, this is weird. We, we, we both have toxic spikes up. I'm not super worried about the hazards on my end, of course, because I do have the Dawn fan with rapid spin. As I'm considering going for a second layer, I'm like, you know, they're surely just going to go Cyclozar here. So I decide I'm going to switch into Tinkaton. Now, it would be a bad idea bringing this thing in before getting rid of the webs. But I do actually have an air balloon, which is great because it allows me to float right above the sticky web and also be immune to ground. So I float in the air with the air balloon. I don't have to worry about the speed drop that would come with it if I switched in there without it. And that's great because they actually end up switching. They are going to bring in the Cyclozar here. So I know that this bicycle fella... Baikal, over here is real government name, is probably going to go for a rapid spin, which is nice because not only do I have a great matchup here, it's going to allow me a spot to go for a swords dance. So they do rapid rapid spin away the sticky web there, which is unfortunate because now Tinkaton's not going to be faster than stuff it would be, you know, without it. It also reveals that this thing came in, it didn't get a, st a stat drop or a poison. Shows me that this thing's holding heavy duty boots or wearing them, I guess. I don't know, he's looking kind of fresh over there. So. I get myself a nice little swords dance, which is necessary because Tinkaton, you know, can't Gigaton hammer his way out of a wet paper bag without it. So with my attack doubled, we're looking pretty strong on pretty much everything they have at this point. So as they go for a rapid spin, they actually decide to bring in the Ting Lu. This thing comes in, weakens special attack. Doesn't matter because we're playing rough out here. It is going to be a super effective hit and a nice little easy to hit KO. They, again, don't have a whole lot that wants to switch, uh, you know, into the, the Steel Fairy over here. So... At this point, I'm kind of just free to go for another play rough here. It's going to take care of this, and they don't have really many options, and I do not miss the play rough, which is fantastic because Game Freak is, in fact, lying about that accuracy. I always miss play roughs. I don't know if it's just me, but we take care of the Tinglu, which is great because that's an annoying threat out of the way, and now they decide to go into the Alolan Ninetales. So good news is Gigaton Hammer absolutely destroys the thing. Bad news is it's going to be faster, and it's going to be able to set up an Aurora Veil, which is what these damn things always do. So... I just go for that Gigaton Hammer, they are going to outspeed, sets up the Aurora Veil, and that is going to kind of weaken my offenses for at least 5 turns if they're like Clay going to be 8. So, I do get off the Gigaton Hammer, do not care about your defensive boost from the you know, both the Snow and the Aurora Veil, that just straight up murders the thing, and that takes care of that. So, we've put a nice little chunk of holes in the team, and we're feeling pretty good at this point, you know, with the tank. So... The best thing that they can do at this point is bring in the, anything that's faster than the Tinkaton to try to, you know, outspeed and get some chip. It turns out the only thing they have that's faster is actually this here Thunderous. And uh, that's, well, I guess also they do have the Cyclozar, which is faster. But that thing, that Dragon type boy is not coming in on the Tinkaton here. So they actually end up going for the Terra Fairy. For whatever reason, they put the heart on their head. And they actually end up going for the Volt Switch. So that's going to do a whole bunch of damage. And it, and it kind of reveals that it's most likely going to be choice specs. Don't know the calcs exactly, but I'm a pretty specially defensive hoe 
<laughs> so I feel like I, it's got to be spec. So I go for the play rough there. It is going to end up switching into Spidops, who is a fella that can take hits. Mostly just because of that Aurora Veil, you know, being annoying. So I go for a Gigaton Hammer, and I stay in because I'm like, you know what, this thing, there's surely no way this thing can hurt me. It goes for Leech Life, probably going to be its only, like, attacking move. And that doesn't do anything, because I am Steel-type with my big old Steel Corviknight Armored Hammer. And as I go for another Play Rough here, I obviously can't Gigaton Hammer, but they just have to continue to Leech Life. I do live that one with six. And we're just, this is great for me, because not only are we going to be able to take care of the Spide Ops and effectively knock out half the team with the Tinkaton, we're also just burning off those Aurora Veil turns, which are always just way more annoying than you'd want them to be. So, I go for a Gigaton Hammer here just to smash the bug one last time. As we do know, they do have the Revenge switch in to the, uh, the Thunderous to just come in and pick me off. So we take care of the uh, Spide Ops, which is great. With that thing gone, I know that now, potentially I can just Rapid Spin with Don Fan if need be, and don't have to worry about the Sticky Web. So... They go back into the Thunderous here, and this thing is looking pretty menacing. I don't really have a reason to save the Tink at this point. They can just finish me off. Turns out they're going to go for that Volt Switch, which is great for me, because now I get to see, you know, what option they want to bring in, and then I can decide to match up, you know, accordingly. So Volt Switch takes care of the Tink a ton, but not before we were an absolute hammer-wielding freaking menace. So they decide to now go ahead and bring in the Bruxish, and this ugly clownfish fella is he's not a clownfish, but it's a fish that looks like a clown. I decide I actually have a pretty good plan here with friggin' Eridos. So first of all, I want to go into Eridos because I can soak up the one layer of toxic spikes that they did have set up. Also, I do get caught in the sticky web. I feel like spider Pokemon should not be affected by sticky web. Game Freak, hire me, Jesus. I also know that I'm Focus Satch here. So while they do have the Psychic Fangs, it's going to knock me down to one. And then I'm like, all I got to do is just go ahead and Mega Horn the absolute shit out of this fella and have a good time. And I'm like, just waiting for it to happen. Megahorn is gonna miss, because why Why would it hit? I don't know. I was in swarm range with Megahorn, would have been amazing. I decide now I can just go for a Sucker Punch. There's no way this thing is dazzling. It is strong jaw, and a Sucker Punch crit actually just kills it. So that's the universe saying, hey, my bad, that Megahorn was supposed to hit, and there you go, buddy. So Aurora Veil does actually wear off this turn, which is amazing because, you know, Ninetales is gone, and now they are down to two Pokemon left. So with the final two being this Thunderous and the Cyclozar, we've already seen the Terra, so there's going to be no shenanigans. I just decide to go for a Sucker Punch before I go down, just essentially knowing that they're going to knock me out. They do go for that Thunderbolt, and that takes care of Ariadil. So here's the thing. We have, basically, I know that Donphan is in a great spot here. If they are choice specs, they're forced to go for that. But then as I'm looking at it, I'm like, you know who never gets to do a damn thing? Gumshoes. <laughs> I bring this thing in just on the off chance here that I can either A, live a Thunderbolt, or if it's not specs for some reason and I miscalculated or something, I can live one. So I'm like, you know what, I'm going to go for the Terra Normal, because if I can potentially live a Thunderbolt, I can get myself a nice little gumshoes kill, which feels better than anything. Also, there's no reason to keep this thing around, essentially, because, you know, I, I just lose to both this and the freaking Cyclozar. So they go for the Thunderbolt, I bust out the Terra Normal, and yeah, that just kills me. So Gumshoes does exactly what it does best. And while I do burn the Terra, I do that just basically because I don't, I, I don't have anything in the back that really needs it. Because I can just now just go right into the Don Fan. And they are essentially going to be forced to switch on out of there. Because they obviously cannot Thunderbolt my ground type fella. So OnlyFans comes in. Subscribe today. And we do get caught up in the Sticky Web, which shouldn't matter at this point. As, you know, they are forced to switch into Cyclozar here. So I'm free to get off a nice little Earthquake. It's gonna do a whole bunch of damage, and then I also know the secret trick behind the Don Fan is not only am I sturdy, so I know that I'm guaranteed to take a hit, I also have a red card to just stir some stuff up just to be annoying. So, in comes Cyclozar with a friggin' tire through his neck. Earthquake is gonna be a nice little easy to hit KO, and while they can go for an attack here, I'm just gonna continue firing off Quakes. They are actually gonna U turn, which is fun because that does break my sturdy, but then it's, I activate red card for pretty much no reason because they only had one other thing to, like, you know switch into anyway, but it draws that thing out saying, hey, you can't choose to switch into that. I forced you. And in comes the Thunderous here. It is um, also staring at me menacingly, but an Earthquake is actually going to be enough to take care of the thing because Don Fan is not a, a fan you want to mess with. This thing is a freaking monster. So that takes care of Thunderous, who was kind of the only threat at this point. And with the only Mon being Cyclozar left, they actually decide to turn their switch off, which 
is <laughs> is great. So that's going to be the end of the match. And I thought that was just kind of a fun one. We definitely don't care about, you know, Cyclozar still being left. I have Intimidate Incineroar switch in, which is why, you know, I was able to mess around with Gumshoes for basically no reason. Because I had the Wincon in the back. However, with that, that's going to bring us into game number two. Because you already know how we do it out here. So if you've stuck around this far into the video, I got a secret for you. You should. Here's what you can do. You can hit that like button down there. Gigaton hammer that bad boy. Because it... It does help out the channel, and uh, I don't know, it takes you a second to click the button, so just, just click it, I don't know. Anyway, let's get into the game. Alright, so this time, my dude's gonna go ahead and lead off with a Blastoise, which, as I lead off with Eridos, is not, not the guy you want to see. First of all, this thing spins in a rapid fashion most of the time, and as I want to set up Sticky Web, they're probably just gonna be able to get rid of it. But then as I'm looking at it, I'm like, you know what, I'm here anyway, I might as well set it up anyways. Just because... If it ends up being a Shell Smash Blastoise, which 99.9% .9 of them are, maybe it's not carrying Rapid Spin and I can still enjoy some Sticky Web. So they are going to go for the, the turn one Shell Smash, which is ballsy because, I don't know, a lot of the time the turn one setups just ain't going to end up well for you. But they do set that up. It is actually also going to be with the White Herb, so it brings its defenses back to normal. And now, all of a sudden, I have a very scary and angry looking Blastoise just staring at me with cannons you know, cocked and loaded. So, I do set up that sticky web, and I'm like, okay, well, at least I know I'm Sash here, so I can take a hit, and then if it's not gonna rapid spin, I can also lay down some toxic spikes and at least try to get some good value out of area dose. But it turns out they are gonna also rapid spin. So, as it's turned, it's a friggin' shell smash and a utility blastoise, and I feel like, damn it. So, <laughs> it gets rid of the sticky web, but at least I can then set up the toxic spikes, and if they wanna get rid of that, they're gonna have to rapid spin again. And at this point, I'm just kind of prioritizing getting some chip on the guy. I want to go for the Sucker Punch here, just get a little bit of damage, doesn't do a whole lot, but they do just Rapid Spin again, which is fine. It, you know, gets rid of the spikes, but also allows me now to just get some more chip with the Sucker Punch. And I'll be damned if I'm getting swept by a turn one friggin' Shell Smash. And also, shout out to the Blastoise model, they really went hard on this fella. So, I'm just gonna think about switching, but I'm like, I don't really have much that wants to deal with this. The only special defensive fella I have would be like a Hydrapple, but then it can just Ice Beam. So I just Sucker Punch here to play it safe. As they're actually going to Hydro Pump and miss, which is nice because I'm like, hey, I'm just going to continue to Sucker Punch. And it would be hilarious if I somehow won this matchup. But as I go for it once more, we do get it down to manageable. And they're just going to go ahead and fire off a Flash Cannon out of dude's forehead. Let's hit the replay. The Invisible Forehead Cannon strikes again, and that does at least... Take care of area dose. So here's the thing, OnlyFans is a perfect guy for the job because we do not care about the setups, at least early. I can come in without taking any hazard damage, I still have my sturdy intact. So I know that I can guarantee, you know, to take an attack. This time, he does use his cannons. Hydro Pump does connect, knocks me down to one, however, and that is solid because then that just activates the old red card and I say, no, 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 you're gonna go ahead and head on out of here and lose your Shell Smash. And also, I'm just able to now just kind of set up Stealth Rock on whatever comes in here. So, it turns out to be this fellow with the Snatched Waste. Rimsnarl is, of course, one of my, again, a freaking screens guy that we just hate to play against. But I get up my Stealth Rock because I'm like, you're going to have to Rapid Spin more. If you <laughs> I love just, I don't know, forcing the Rapid Spin is kind of fun. I don't have a Ghost type to switch into it, but at this point, I just decide to go for a knockoff. Now, I know that Grim Snarls, they always do the same thing. I, you've heard me complain about it a thousand times, but I know that they're just going to be dual screens. So, I go for the knockoff. Turns out to actually get rid of leftovers, and I'm like, hmm, it's actually not light clay, which is interesting. And now, they actually go for a nasty plot. So, just as I'm complaining about the guy, I realize that it's, in fact, a special attacking nasty plot one, and that's actually kind of cool. So, and I go for the earthquake through the reflect, not going to do a whole lot, but I do need some type of damage off on this thing. And plus, Donphan's kind of just used up at this point. I don't really need to conserve it. It's not going to be too fast to be able to do much. So I do let it go down to the Dark Pulse here. So with Donphan gone, I'm basically like, okay, I, I know that there's a Reflect up. However, Tinkaton honestly has a pretty good matchup here. I don't care about Dark Pulses. Even with the Nasty Plot, I can scare this thing out with the threat of a Gigaton Hammer. And also, we know that that Reflect isn't going to stay around for the 8 turn. So I come in floating in the air with my Air Balloon, which is fun. And I decide this time, I'm going to go right for the Gigaton Hammer. I want to try to just get as much damage as possible. And um, that's kind of what the hammer's for. So we bust that shit out. They're actually going to end up switching out. They're going to bring in Zamazenta. Now this is a defensive doggo. And it looks like Bubblegum that does not really care about getting smushed by a hammer. It does also get his Dauntless Shield, which is going to give it a defensive boost. Behind it, Reflect, this thing is defensive as tits. And Gigaton Hammer doesn't really, you know, do anything to it. So... 
As I'm looking at the matchup, Tinkaton actually does still look pretty useful in this game. I, I, I don't want to take any unnecessary damage here. Plus, chilling here with that thing having a defense boost and behind a reflect. I, I just don't have the best time here. I also thinking, hey, maybe I could conserve the old air balloon and still have a friggin' birthday party. So, I am going to end up switching out here. I decided to bring in the Hydrapple. I want to hit this thing on the special side. And uh, Hydrapple is just kind of a pretty good guy at that. Also, getting some good pivots is what it's here for. So... They actually end up going for the Metal Burst, which doesn't affect me because I did not touch it. They're probably trying to bait me into going for something like a Play Rough, but we're not playing Rough today. So, the Reflect does wear off, which is great, but at this point, I'm free to get some pretty big damage here. Now, I decide to go for the Draco Meteor over Leaf Storm, which I realize I should have clicked Leaf Storm because they're actually going to end up switching into the Klefki here, and uh, obviously Klefki's not going to care about the Draco Meteor. But what this Hydrapple is here to do is essentially pivot around, and that is with my Eject Pack. Both of my attacking moves drop your special attack, and then I would be able to kind of pivot out, and it just gives good momentum for this team in trying to draw in matchups. But I want to try to keep that uh, Eject Pack intact, so there's no reason to go for a Leaf Storm against this thing. So I'm just going to go right back into Tinkaton. Now, while I can't hit this thing that hard, I also know that, that it's kind of free setup fodder against the set of keys here. Now, they're going to go for the Light Screen, and this asshole's got double screen guys, and that's annoying. So light screen's fine, obviously. I'm allowed to just essentially now go for a free swords dance. And Tinkaton is once again gonna try to just do its do its thing here with its with its dancing around with swords. So they don't know that I'm swords dance tink yet. They actually are now gonna bring back in the Zombazenta, does not get Dauntless Shield, and also they don't have a reflect this time. So as I set up that swords dance, get the nice little doubled attack. I'm looking at this dog thinking I could probably just go ahead and play rough here and get some pretty solid damage. We know that Metal Burst is scary, but I'm going to go for it regardless, and that's just going to straight up take care of it, which is fun because it's nice to kill stuff without even having to use the hammer, and uh, down goes a pretty good defensive switch in for them. So, now they just go right back into the Clef Camp, thinking this thing's probably Light Clay with Reflect also, which is probably what they're going to go for. Um, but I'm gonna, so I'm gonna take this opportunity to actually just go for another sword stance, and it turns out they're actually gonna move last, so I'm excited to see what this thing wants to go for. It turns out it's gonna use Trick Room, which I, first of all, did not expect, and that's gonna kind of throw a wrench in my fast Tinkaton's plans here a little bit, but I'm still feeling relatively fine. As they go for a foul play, I do have two sword stances, so even the resisted hit is gonna hurt quite a bit, but I take less than half from it, which is great, and then allows me now to fire off a Gigaton Hammer, and that is just going to go ahead. Those keys are not going to be usable anytime soon. Things are mangled as hell. And that does take care of the Klefki, which is great. So, now they decide to go into Malamar, who is definitely a squiddy fella that does benefit from some Trick Room. Because now this thing is going to be faster. But as I'm looking at it here, I'm thinking there's a kind of good chance I can take an attack here. They're going to end up outspeeding. They go for the superpower. And I do live it with 23, which is amazing because... Although they do get a defensive boost with that contrary, I can now go for that super effective stab play rough, and that's going to take care of friggin' Squilliam Fancy Sun over there. So that takes care of Malamar, and uh, Tinkaton once again on a little bit of a tear here. So bad news is the Trick Room is still up, and as they're able to go into the Dusclops here, it means it's going to go first, and at this point I basically am just going to go down to the Nightshade. So Trick Room strikes again, but... Tinkaton is just, I got rid of the Malamar, which is always scary if that thing's able to set up just too many superpowers. They can be a problem, especially with Trick Room up. So, now I get to Revenge Switch into whatever I want. And as I'm looking at it, Young Goose, or sorry, Gumshoes, I don't know, he's got, he's, this thing's weird. But, I do know that I have a decent matchup here, because it's only attacking is probably Nightshade. And then also, I would really like to get this thing's Eviolite off of it. So, as they end up going for the Will-O-Wisp, which is not great for Gumshoes, because I need all the attack I can get. I go for that knockoff, and I actually do get a critical hit, which is great, and most importantly, we get rid of that Eviolite, because now this thing's going to be a whole lot less bulky, and uh, Dusclops just has a good a good way of just sticking around and never dying, but now that's going to make it a whole lot easier. So, also, the dimensions are going to return to normal, which is fine, and I can just go ahead and switch into... I decide to go Incineroar here, because I, I don't really know what they want to do against the Gumshoes here, but Incineroar actually has a pretty good opportunity to kind of set up in this thing's face. I can't be Will-O-Wisp, obviously being Fire-type, and this is not your ordinary Incineroar here. So they actually go for the Nightshade versus the Gumshoes. It wasn't going to affect it, but as I bring in the Kitty, I take that 50 damage, and that's fine. You can continue to go for that, as I want to set up a nice little bulk up here. So that's going to go ahead, boost my attack and defense, and this thing is in the business of setting up stats, because we're actually Power Trick, and uh, they're going to go ahead and set back up the Trick Room, which 
is going to twist the dimensions and stir shit up here, which is kind of fine because with the bulk up, you know, I'm, I'm bulky against everything they got. I know this thing can only hit me with nightshades. And while it's able to go first, it is going to disable my bulk up, which is like, okay, I didn't click it anyway. So it gets rid of my setup opportunity, at least with that. However, with this thing's Eviolite like gone and two stat boosts, a power trip with that stab is going to be able to take care of the clops. And that is another annoying fella, you know, out of the way. So, here's the situation. They have a Blastoise left. Now, after Stealth Rock, it's in range for pretty much anything to kill it. And as I'm looking at what I have left, I have two opportunities. Either I go for a Terra Dark to be able to live a Hydro Pump here, or I save the Terra for the Hydro Apple. I decide to roll the chance that Hydro Pump misses, but it actually connects and just kills Incineroar. So, first of all, freaking Trick Room ruined my plans there because the thing was faster. And uh, it was just kind of a weird turn. But I still feel like having Hydrapple left is kind of win condition at this point. But also, what's also really fun is <laughs> I can go into Gumshoes here and even Burnt. I'm feeling like I can, if I can proc a freaking Hydro Pump miss, I can actually kill with a Body Slime here. So they go for that Hydro Pump and yet yeah, it, it doesn't miss. And Gumshoes again. Half of the time you're using Gumshoes, you're just hoping for bad stuff to happen to them to allow it to do something. But... It doesn't, and now I find myself in a situation where my final mon being Hydrapple is still kind of fine. I still feel like I have this game in the bag, because their final mon after this Blastoise is going to be the Grimmsnarl. And I'm also Steel Terra, so that's going to at least allow me the matchup there. But then I find myself in a spot where, shit, I actually cannot really afford to, like, take, you know, I, I, I can't take a special attack drop via going for a Leaf Storm, because I need that offense versus Grimmsnarl. So, as I go for the Steel Terra, it's funny because I know I'm going to be faster, but I've got myself in a little bit of pickle in this in this late game. So, I go for the Infestation. Now, I've been messing around with this thing having Infestation. It's a bad idea, at least in this situation, because it doesn't quite kill there. But they're able to go for that Forehead Flash Cannon, and it's obviously not going to do anything. They didn't Ice Beam, which is probably over, like, the Rapid Spin slot. But... Infestation on the second turn does kill the Blastoise, which is exactly what we needed, so just a roundabout ass way to get that taken care of. And now we got ourselves a 1v1 situation versus Grimmsnarl. So the Steel Terra at least helps me against the Fairy Stab, and I'm feeling like if I can get, you know, a Leaf Storm off here, at least if they don't have a Light Screen up, it can kill. And if they do get a Light Screen up, I'm feeling like it's a two hit KO. So they're actually gonna go ahead and bust out a Terra of their own. They figure, hey, it's the last matchup. Might as well use it. it. I'm hoping it's going to be something that allows something to happen, but it's just going to be Terra Fairy. So it busts out the heart on its head. It's not going to really affect my Leaf Storm damage at all. It is going to boost some Fairy Stab on their end, but I'm Steel type and yeah. So they go for the Light Screen with that Prankster is going to allow it to go first. And I fire off that Leaf Storm, which is going to do a nice little chunk of damage and is most importantly going to drop my special attack. However, with the damage we have on this thing, I'm feeling like, hey, I actually just grab a kill here and I know I can take a hit. They go for the Dark Pulse trying to grab himself the flinch. It does not quite happen in the Leaf Storm. It lives on freaking 1 HP which is crazy because now we've got ourselves in a way more interesting spot where if they flinch me with a Dark Pulse it's gonna make things very interesting. They also get a crit but they don't get the flinch and I also do not miss the Leaf Storm so holy hell that got a lot more intense than it should have been but that's gonna finish off the Grim Snarl and that is going to be the end of the game. So that was a fun match. This team is full of shenanigans, and uh, it came down to the freaking the last the last little second there. So that's gonna be the end of the video. Thank you guys very much for watching. For real, I do appreciate all the support. You guys are absolutely great, and I will catch you next time. Peace out.